Shalom. Give all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahshai Bashim Rakakadash. Kahala Yam Yabashim, Yahshai Bashim Rakakadash. And give all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahshai Bashim Rakakadash. It's going to be something short. A few videos I'm going to go to, a few verses relating. Um, I'm going to 2nd Ezra 15. Number one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in, in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So the prophets through the Spirit is going to speak among his people, man. Speak the words of prophecy, the things that's going on. To have Israel to um, know, know certain things, man. And that's through the prophets. And part of those things to know is to repent and pretty much the, the, uh, the signs of the times that's happening, man. You can also go with uh, Isaiah 58 and 1. You get that one too. Isaiah 58 and 1. Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry out loud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Trumpet is a loud instrument. So it's known for its noise and, its, and the loudness of its noise. And shew my people their transgressions, the house of Jacob and their sins. And that's the whole point. Shew their transgressions and their sins to make them come back and repent and know certain things that they need to know. And the times they're in related to prophecy, man. And um, to have them uh, repent, knowing that who they are relating to the 12 tribes. That's them, you know. Wake up those dry bones, man, relating to Ezekiel uh, 37, man. And through the prophets, that's that's what's happening. Let's go back to um, number two. Number two. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So that relates to these, the, the, uh, this, the word, man. The truth and knowledge relating to the, in the scriptures, man. It's faithful and true, man. Three. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity, which is disbelief, of them that trouble thee. That speak against you. And that's the two thirds. They're gonna speak against you. They're gonna mock you. They're gonna ridicule you, and different things, man. Starting with the, um, the elders, apostles, and on down, man. They've been doing it for a long time. To the brothers on down, man. They're looked at uh, by the eyes of society as a mock, as a, uh, a laughing stock, a gazing stock, man. For teaching and trying to help the, the rest of the nation Israel to let them know who they are. Number four, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. And that's what's going to happen. They're going to die in their unfaithfulness for not believing. Two thirds, the greater of the ratio is going to die in their unfaithfulness, man. It's point blank simple. Five. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, the famine, death, and destruction. Different types of plagues that's going to be put upon the face of the earth, man. So many people, these things are like a, a, a sci-fi movie or a joke, man. But when these things actually manifest, then it's not going to be a joke no more, man. It's going to be reality check. A reality. So they can mock and scuff like they do because there's nothing happening. It's easy to do that. And when the things happen, start happening, then they're gonna oh, they're gonna say, oh, I better try to get in line. And that's that's the wicked of nation of Israel, two thirds, man. They bandwaggers, man. Try to get on the last minute, man. And that's the spirit of them, man. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And their hurtful works are fulfilled, man. The wickedness, man, because the one in power, man, caused all this, man. The two-thirds are pretty much a, a joint hand-in-hand. 
So they, they, they contribute as well to it, man. They join hand in hand, they shall not go unpunished. So they're going to get the judgment with it, man. Let's go to... Um, I'll go down to 11. But I will bring them out with a mighty hand and stretch out or and smite Egypt with plagues be as before and will destroy all the land thereof. And Egypt shall mourn and the foundations of it shall be, be smitten. And the plagues of, and the plagues in the punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon them. Now that's what's going to happen upon Egypt. Egypt represents Babylon, man. That's America. Revelations 18 talk about it in one hour that's that mighty city um, one hour thy, thy judgment come um, let's say 13 they that till the ground shall mourn and their seed shall fail through the blast and inhale with, her, with a fearful consolation and woe to the world and them that dwell therein for example for the sword and the destruction draw off nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another with swords in their hands. And there shall be sedition among men, invading one another, and shall not regard their kings nor princes. The course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go in the city, and shall not be able. And for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. And the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. That's the times we're in, man. Precursively in the time, in those times, man, the civil unrest, the sedition, insurrection, we in those times. Neighbor against neighbor, brother, brother against brethren, the spirit of division. Think not that I come to send peace, but a sword, man. Matthew ten thirty four. So the Lord is not sending a pe uh, peace among the people; He's sending division, man. Because we in times of prophecy, man. That's the times we're in, man. It's only going to intensify as it gradually continues. Nineteen. Man shall have no pity upon his, his neighbor. But shall but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil. Their goods because of a lack of bread and great tribulation. Famines. Cannibalism. Martial law. Um, pretty much civil unrest. The trials and tribulations of persecution upon the believers that fear the Lord. Great tribulation. Jacob's trouble. MOB Nuclear war All these things are going to come to pass, man All these things are going to come to pass Let's go to um, 16, let's read some verses in 16 I'm going to start at um, 17. Woe, woe is me. That's so as they're saying, woe is me, seeing the things that's going to happen and, uh, and, and relating to those times. Woe is pretty much a, a warning for destruction, man. Who will deliver me in those days? Question. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginnings of evils. That's the times we're in. We're in the beginning of evils, man. We're in the latter beginning times of evils, man. It's been beginning. It's, it's always begun. Uh, the beginning of evils is always. But it's becoming, in, we're in the latter times of it now. You know what I mean? But the evils always was, was there from the beginning. We're in the latter beginning, latter end of the evils.
Behold, famine and plague and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for the men. A scourge is a tool for punishment, to implement punishment upon the wicked. But all these things that, that all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges, man. And that's two-thirds of the population of people. They're not going to be mindful of these things, even when they're manifesting. And making it, making it obvious. They're not going to be mindful of these things. But victual shall be, be so good sheep upon the earth. That they shall think themselves to be in a good case. And even, even then shall evils grow upon the earth. So they're going to underestimate the times. They're going to think a pre-peace a pre -peace is going to try to redevelop. They're going to take for granted that things behind that, whether covert, overt, behind the scenes is happening. And those things are going to creep and manifest and intensify. And those evils are going to increase more. So that's pretty much a distraction, man. A pre... By, um, by putting them in a pre-sleep, a pre-state of sleep. And distraction by using these other forms of distraction to pretty much so they won't get suspicious of the things that's really going on. Let's continue on. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of the famine, and the other, and the other, escape the hunger, shall the sword destroy. So they escape one, they're gonna have to deal with another. Simultaneous inescapable situations that's gonna that's gonna um, pretty much continue. They're not gonna be able to escape different the th different things that's gonna happen, but it's gonna look like a sci-fi movie basically. Because when they when they hear of these things, that's what they think of. They think these things can't really happen, man. Scripturally speaking, it says it's gonna happen. And that's why a lot of people don't believe this, believe related to this, man. They can't even phantom it in their mind that these things is possible man there is some there's something out there that's higher and greater than our understanding man but not for the two thirds of the population they in dark man they in the dark and the dead shall be cast out as dung and there shall be no man to comfort them for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down because of the state and condition of society, man. People are going to be literally dropping bodies, man. It's going to be looking like um, zombie warfare out here, man. The apocalyptic movies, those sci-fi movies, they get that from somewhere, man. And that's going to be the state relating to the latter times, man. Especially when food and different things become scarcity. These things are going to become a scarcity, and these people are going to be doing strange things. Nothing new is nothing new. Has, um, nothing new. Nothing different. What's that verse? Nothing um, has changed under the sun, man. So these things are. It's nothing new, man. Nothing new under the sun. So these things are going to man manifest again, but intensify even greater, man. I want to go over to um, 70 to 74. It talks about the impending persecution. And there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection. Insurrection what? It's a violent uprising. Now. Upon those that fear the Lord specifically. But overall insurrection. Overall, generally. One. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. So they're going to be violent. They're going to lay hands. They're going to be violent, man. But still, spoil and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their, their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Zechariah 13, 8. 
two third part will be cut off, one third will be left in, there in, and the third part, uh, the one third part will be will be put into the fire, man. That physical and the spiritual fire, man. And this relates to the pending persecution of pretty much the Lord's people and the believers, starting with the top with the elect, man. I want to go to Second Ezra and nine. Second Ezra is nine. Second Ezra is nine, nine. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. That's the two thirds. They cast them away despitefully. They ain't trying to hear this, man. I ain't mean, trying to hear um, the words that's being uh, displayed relating to Isaiah 58 and 1, 2nd Ezra 15 and 1 by the prophets. It's not, this is not a song that's, um, that vibrates to be a cool tune for them to hear, man. You don't want to hear that. The verse talking about Isaiah, speak us, uh, speak us not, to speak us uh, smooth, thing, smooth things, uh, prophesize deceit, and lies, paraphrasing. So they want to hear things that's um, good to their ears, man. Number 10, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. So they receive benefits, the ways, the benefits, the society, which is through Yahweh Bashim Yoshah, without thanks, without gratification, without, uh, without gratitude and thinking of the Lord, man. Go to number, um, go to number 12 number 12 11 and they that have loathed my law while they yet had liberty so it's a grace period man it's a liberty to pretty much um, acknowledge um, get, in, get, get in order about certain things man especially because the times we're living in we living in very critical times man and when as yet a place of repentance was open to them, understood not but despised. Instead of trying to work their, to trying to work, um, get in order to the best of their abilities, acknowledging certain things, and um, repent and work what they can work, they despised it, man. They despised this truth, man. They despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. So the consequences is um, they're going to know it by death by pain. Let the unfaithful die in their unfaithfulness. The same shall know it death by pain, man. That's the two-thirds, man. Because they really didn't hearken to heed. They had no interest to. So they despised this stuff. And that's the spirit that's in them anyway. They're just going back to their lot. Their lot is their part they're playing, man. You know? There's only going to be a few left that's going to be saved, man. There's only going to be a remnant. Remnant is a small amount. It's not for everybody, but ultimately in the next kingdom, it'll be all together. You know what I mean? The two-thirds will come back through the loins of the one-third, man. And all of Israel will be back. But the point is, right now, it's only for that small remnant starting with the elect, man. Read that one again. Number, they have loathed my law, the law raised to the commandments, this is the Bible, while they, had, had, while they yet had liberty. Liberty is that grace period, that, that point to um, get back in order. And when as yet a place of repentance was opened into them, understood not, but despised it. So two thirds of despised it. They despise this truth, man. Like I said, this song is not, it doesn't resonate, it doesn't resonate with everybody, man. And two-thirds, it doesn't resonate. They just, they just don't, they're not feeling the beat like that, man. So, they despise this, regarding this truth, man.
15. I have said before and now do, now do speak and I will speak it also at hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. That's the remnant. Like a, like a wave is greater than a drop related to that ratio, man. So more is going to perish than be saved, man. A greater of that number is going to perish than be saved, man. That's that remnant, that small amount. Start with the top, with the elect. Those men, whoever they may be. Go to um, go to Second Peter's real quick. Second Peter's um, This be the last one. Knowing knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scuffers. Walking after their own lust, the mockers, the scuffers, the unbelievers, man. And saying, where is the promise of his coming, man? So they, they mock and they say, where is the Lord when he's going to come? Is he going to come? Some believe not in this lifetime. That's the attitude a lot of them have. They don't even believe a God exists. I heard a comment one time, a sky daddy. We'll read that again and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation so they think this, this society is going to continue forever two-thirds of our people also the ones in power put what that was psalms 49 and 11 if they believe that uh inwardly in their heart they believe that, uh, their houses will continue from generation to generation man and the rest of the verse talk about they name they name um they name the places after themselves. So the majority of population thinks business as usual, man. Not knowing that a transition, a change is happening, man. Right in front of them, man. They don't even know it, man. And that was just something short. I hope it helps whoever listened. Give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakadash, Shalom.